This episode of TopCast is brought to you by UCF Online. 20 plus years of award-winning online excellence, over 75 online programs, one of the largest and most innovative universities in the U.S. UCF.edu slash online. From the University of Central Florida's Center for Distributed Learning, I'm Kelvin Thompson. And I'm Tom Cavanaugh. And you are listening to TopCast, the teaching online podcast. Hi, Tom. Hello, Kelvin. Fancy meeting you here. Yeah. Just happened to be wandering by with these headphones on. <laughs> Thought I would sit down and have talk cup, into this here microphone. Have a cup of coffee. Have a cup of coffee. And yeah. we haven't done this in a while, but I guess I, we should say, uh, you know, I listen to some of our episodes. It's like I get, you know, if you were new, you're like, what's the deal with the coffee? <laughs> no, you're right. We used to reset that every so often. Now and again. Yeah, and we haven't in a very long time. Just assuming that we've got such a vast legion of <laughs> listeners from the very beginning. A legion of three. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe it is worth saying a word or two that. Um, you know, what's with the coffee? Guys? What's with the coffee? Yeah. So um, that's that's become part of our little routine here. We yep. sit, have a cup of coffee, and yep. talk online learning. And the idea is that we um, we we are just a, a couple of dudes sitting around over coffee talking about interesting things in online learning. And um, the coffee, just by coincidence, is always thematically selected to the topic <laughs> of the day. You try to make a connection, right? You that's know. right. Uh, you, sometimes you find it a little a little dubious, I think. But, you know, hey, you know. <laughs> Some are a little stretchy. <laughs> Some are stretchier than others. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's all right. And so uh, for those that don't know, Kelvin is something of a coffee expert. Mm. Uh, I call him like a coffee sommelier. Uh, he can pair your coffee with whatever your meal of choice is. <laughs> um, and he, he has a refined coffee palate. We would not use the word snob. I would. I, I wouldn't use such a term. <laughs> no, that's very kind term. of you. That's very kind um, of you. But yeah, I've learned a lot about coffee in the, what is it? We're on our fourth year now. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, that we've been doing this. That's right. It's a lot of coffee under the under the tongue, I don't know, where, down, <laughs> down the hatch, something. It's yeah, the place. That's right. Well, I guess that we should jump into um, uh, talking about the coffee. Um, I kind of like this. This is a nice taste. I like this a lot. Yeah, so we, we started. We started our coffee just as we were clicking record. Here. That's right, exactly. Poured poured it down in the the cup. So today's coffee is a I, I would I would agree with this a tasty Guatemala from a farm whose name I will probably butcher Miral Valle uh, in Guatemala. Uh, it comes to us from a brand new coffee roaster in San Antonio, Texas, called Shady Cliff Coffee Company. And given that we're going to be talking in this episode about a new startup project, it seemed timely to drink and feature this coffee. So we should note that this coffee was sent in to us by Shady Cliff Coffee co-founder and top cast listener, Kenneth Rogers from the Alamo College District. Thanks very much, Kenneth. Thank you, Kenneth. That's much, awesome. much appreciated. Yes, yeah, so what do you think of the coffee? It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, thanks, Kenneth. Even with the... All the stuff you put in there. I always put stuff in my yeah. coffee. I actually didn't put that much in this one. No, that's good. Yeah, I, I just put the coffee in the coffee, and I, this is very nice. It's very tasty. I like yeah. it very much. <clears throat> so you get the so you got the coffee. You get the connection. I do. It's startup ish. Startup ish. Which is yes. one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, that's true. Gimlet Media. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a uh, a project that is um, has just concluded its first year. Mm-hmm. So it is something of a startup yep. for us. And um, and maybe others in the online learning community will find it of value. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. So what what is it? Well, it's called Top Kit. Who names these things? I know. <laughs> We've got all these top things um, between Top Cast and Topper mm-hmm. and Top Kit. Top Kit. Uh, so Top Kit is the the teaching online preparation toolkit. Yep. It is a it is a kind of an abbreviation of that long mouthful. A portmanteau. A portmanteau, thank you. So the idea of that is it's a it's a website and online community, and at least here in the state of Florida, an annual gathering, um, for those of us who train faculty to teach online. Mm-hmm. And it's replete with resources and uh, examples and um, questions and answers and um, discussions mm-hmm. and kind of it's a it's a 
uh, definitely a community, um, not just a repository of information. Yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's uh, February uh, 2018, saw its one year anniversary, so we're uh, just a couple months past that. So yeah, we're just getting going, really, I mean, in, yeah. in, some, in some respects, but we've heard a lot of good feedback. Yeah, and the idea was, um, you know, it's sort of built on our experience. We've mm-hmm. got more than 20 years of doing faculty development, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. we've come up with a few things that we think work, um, and we also have observed from others things that we think work for them because yeah. n- what we do doesn't work in every context no. for every school right. and um, there's a there's a lot of ways to kind of come at that uh, come at that goal yeah so why why make this thing um, it, it actually began um, longer ago than a year ago um, when the state had issued an, an RFI I think or it was an RFP um, for ITN ITN PDQ something XYZ yeah. They were asking for ideas yeah. um, <laughs> um, on on how could we AFI. prepare a a web web resource and a, kind of an annual gathering and um, just a collection of resources for uh, for those of us in the in the online learning world across the state of Florida mm-hmm. who are training faculty to teach online. Mm-hmm. It was an initiative to improve faculty development, and by getting at it by going through the folks who actually conduct that faculty development. And try to, I guess, right, is this right, uh, kind of avoid duplication as well. So you don't all have to do it all over again if somebody could be, yes, you know, hey, here it is. And to not have good ideas sort of locked up at an institution, yeah, but to right. share them across not just the state university mm-hmm. system, but also the state college system, mm-hmm. um, kind of where our, our community and state colleges are. Yeah. So um, we proposed. You helped mm-hmm. <laughs> in the preparation of that proposal, and I came up with a dumb name. Right? <laughs> <laughs> <That's what> I, <laughs> I'm not that original. Um, it's a little more than that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, some of us got in a car and drove up to Tallahassee and presented, and it got reviewed, and we won. Yeah, uh, that was awesome. And then the legislature proceeded not to fund it. Oh, yeah. So good news, bad news. Um, so it sat on the shelf for about a year or so, and then, um, God bless, the Florida Virtual Campus who awesome. stepped in and said, you know what, we'll fund the first year because it was a five-year proposal. And the, the bulk of the funding was required for the first year where you would actually build this web resource. And then mm-hmm. the, the subsequent years were kind of to maintain it and then put on this annual conference yeah. slash workshop. Yeah. And then uh, the Council of Academic Vice Presidents of the State University System agreed to fund the subsequent uh, four years. God bless them. Isn't yeah, that great? It is. Uh, so each institution in Florida, um, at least each state university mm-hmm. in Florida, has agreed to kind of prorate their commitment to kind of keep it going um, based on FTE at, at school. So mm-hmm. UCF is paying into that, yeah, but right. only only at a portion. And I mean, it's not a lot of money when you no. divide it up. It was, I don't know, I think it was like an annual fifty or $60,000 mm-hmm. a year yeah, yeah. <clears throat> to kind of keep it going. And so you divide that across the, yeah. the 12 schools. So um, that was sort of how it started. We did um, throughout, uh, what was it, 2016, kind of like the yeah. f- summer, fall, right, build right, right, the website right. and mm-hmm. stand it up. It was a, it was a m- many hands on deck effort. It really was. There's actually a page on the, uh, we should mention this, topkit.org. Uh, anybody can get there. It's, everything's public and it's all Creative Commons license. It's great. Uh, but there is a page on there that kind of, List. Uh, it's kind of like the, w- the credits roll at the end of the movie. <laughs> and right. You go, dang! It takes a lot of people <laughs> to make a movie. Yeah. It takes a lot of people to make a top kit, as it turns out. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And you name it from uh, pretty much the whole instructional design team yeah. to um, to our tech rangers yeah. and all the people who help program it and in our event planning team. Yeah. And they did a, an awesome job. So yeah, it was. It was definitely a family affair here at UCF. There's an advisory board across the state of Florida. Yes, I didn't even mention that. And we had a uh, we did usability testing. We went around to a couple different institutions and had folks test out stuff. And yeah, I mean, it takes a village. Yeah, in fact, the advisory board is both university and college yeah. representatives. There's even some faculty voice on mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. And so that was yeah. I think uh, I think um, it was it was a well put together, well executed plan by the team. Yeah, and. We conducted our first annual workshop last spring. 2017. 2017, uh, yeah, <laughs> depending when you're listening That's to right. this. <laughs> That's right. That's um, right. And uh, that went well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, was, it was very much geared around 
uh, helping the the people from around the state uh, understand how to make use of this resource mm-hmm. and to engage in the community. Yeah. And then we just did our second one in 2018. Mm-hmm. And it was, I think, a really interesting evolution because yeah. it wasn't so much about here's how you use the resources and engage, but it was much more of a, a conference format where yeah. where people were sharing. Mm-hmm. Here's what works at my school. Here's what we've been doing. Here's what we've learned. And um, I think people were able to uh, contribute and share information in a in a really productive way. Yeah, I agree with that. It's it's kind of like as you retell the origin story. You know, it's kind of like the thought is, hey, put all this knowledge together and put it on a website, and that's helpful. But it's only so helpful because you got to bring it to life, and so the online community of practice helps with that. But the workshop is intended to help with that, and that's just kind of grown and and people are. are it's talking about how they're making use of the of the ideas on the website, but it's gone beyond that to actually, as you say, to to share other ideas. It's taken on more of a life of its own. It's really neat to see that kind of evolution take mm-hmm. place. Yeah, and so I've mentioned Florida and statewide a few mm-hmm, times, but mm-hmm. you know I think it's important to just clarify that. Um, the the website, as you said, is open to all. Mm-hmm. We've got international visitors, oh, yeah. um, but um, the the workshop is sort of you know restricted to Florida um, institutions. Yeah. I like to say, Tom, that it's Florida funded, Florida focused, but open to the world. There you go. The site, anyway. That's right. In fact, the only thing you're going to see in there that sort of is Florida specific is the logo. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, everything else is is just completely applicable to any online context. But we were real sensitive. So, for what, for example, one of the things that we include in there uh, are actually it's two things: um, two different versions of a of a prototype faculty development course. Mm-hmm. We've got kind of the full version and then a, a light version yeah. of it. And um, there's all kinds of interesting, you know, meta comments in in there, like, "Well, you're mm-hmm. going to want to change this part to yeah, fit your institution." Yeah, yeah. Right, and it's right, a right. it's a really easy. Uh, way to implement a, an online course. You could just adopt it. I it get a lot of jaw drops when I share that with people like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's based on what we've d- been doing here for so long and, and have actually won awards for. Um, again, Creative Commons. Um, so it's open for everybody. But we were real cognizant of the fact that, so we're at a, a large research university. We've got a large team. Um, there are people in the state, particularly at the college level, mm. that don't necessarily have our staff or resources. Right. And so they couldn't implement training for online learning the same way that we can. Right. But this resource needs to be able to serve them yeah. as much. And so we, we tried to make sure that we covered the spectrum of the kinds of institutions and that you could take these resources and, and apply them in context-specific ways that would be of, of use to you. Yeah, I think the sample course is really a, a draw. Um, and like you said, Creative Commons licensed. You can just right now, we'll have the, all this uh, specific links in the show notes. So you should go there and take a look. Or you can just go to, again, topkit.org, browse around. But you'll find uh, the sample courses. You can click right into a publicly accessible uh, version of the, of the sample courses through our learning management system. And you can just kind of click around. But then it's all IMS uh, common cartridge uh, download uh, as well. So you can upload into whatever your LMS is and, and, and like you said, make edits as you, as you wish. They're all um, highlighted and commented and, you know, you should change this and you should change that. Um, but I think a part that goes hand in glove with that is something I really like a lot, which is the faculty development decision guide. Yep. Um, so the idea is you could take, we did usability testing on this, uh, 20 minutes or less answer some questions, and it spits out recommendations about what you might do in your context to enhance your existing practice, or if you're starting from the, from scratch, what you can do to get started, and then how the top kit resources can serve a role in helping you, which I think is tremendous. That's based on a model that some of our instructional designers here at UCF put together, the quality transformation model for faculty development, Rohan Jawala, Linda Futch. Um, Tommy Barrett Greenlee, formerly at UCF, um, and others. And others. I hate to start listening names because <laughs> you'll, you'll always forget somebody <sighs> who contributed. But you know, it, it's a, uh, it's. I think it's a great piece of work. And in fact, wasn't it um, the number one tweeted 
thing from the last yeah, OLC, the OLC Innovate. Innovate conference. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Uh, the person who had the, the highest number of tweets was tweeting about this resource. You, you see the, the image of the model in the, in the tweet. Yeah, that's so, great. Yeah, it was really cool. So that, that's a really, uh, a really useful tool that will um, we'll get to that context question. So what mm-hmm. would work in my context? And that, that, that might be the, even the, the best place to kind of start when you get in there. Yeah, I mean, not to go too much into the weeds, but like, for instance, we have the luxury here at UCF of having full-time instructional designers who can actually meet with faculty and consult and so forth. That's not everybody's deal, as, as you alluded. So uh, there are some scenarios where you might use existing teaching faculty as peer mentors. Yep. And so that's just one tiny sliver in that uh, model that might take you down a, a different path. Um, do you want to say a word or two about the community of practice? Sure. So we try to, the idea was to bring to life the website. Because you make a website, you launch it, great. Eh. And we've had, and we should say, the first uh, year and a couple months, we've had nearly 60,000 page views. Um, nearly 50,000 of those are unique page views. So From people, all over the world. From all over the world, right. And so, I mean, it's getting viewed. But we were very sensitive to, yeah, you just put stuff on a website and eh. Even if you go visit it, that doesn't necessarily get the ideas into practice. And yeah. so the idea of fostering a community of practice um, through some kind of interaction venue uh, was really important to us. So there are these, you know, kind of forum uh, settings on the site, but then they're all cross-linked between the content pages, which is kind of cool. So you look at the content page, and uh, we've worked it out where you can see uh, individual discussion threads or forum threads at the bottom of that page that might be, uh, based on tags, might be related to what you're looking at. And then you can go right into that and see what members of the community are saying. And then we periodically curate, um, p- comb through the community of practice and ask for permission to post uh, formally into the, the site additional ideas. So we're seeing lots of interaction around um, idea sharing and, well, how do you handle that? Well, here's yeah. what I do. And here's a, here's a Word doc version of it and that kind of stuff, which is really kind of cool. Yeah. And that was, that's the, you know, one of the, if it had two lungs to breathe with, yeah. one is the yeah. content yeah. and then the other is the community. Yeah. Um, and as you said, so far, so good. And we've already gotten um, over 250 registered contributors. Um, anybody can go in and look at the mm-hmm, forum, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but if you want to contribute, you just have to register, which is free. You just kind of have to yeah, yeah, yeah. put your name in. You, you know how that is, right? You're trying to avoid um, forum spam and, and all that, right. which, you know, it, it happens, and uh, we squish but it. It did happen a few times. Here. Yes. We try to squish that when it happens. <laughs> but I think but we've fixed that. Well, yeah, we're, we're working. Yeah, it's always a challenge, Tom. <laughs> it's always a challenge. Uh, one of my favorite things is the Ask Addy Um column. And uh, those of you that are Ann Landers fans mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or Dear Abby, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've got Ask Addy. And those of you who are instructional designers might recognize Addy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, A-D-D-I-E. It's all caps. It's for, all caps. <laughs> for those right. that might be not looking at it while you're listening. That's right. Um, and I'm going to reveal a super secret here. Uh-oh. Um, so as you may not know, um, or maybe you do know, that uh, Ann Landers and and dear Abby, they were like sisters, right? Yeah, that's, and, what, that's the story. Um, and sometimes those advice columns aren't always written by the person right, whose right, face right, right. is at the top of the column. Yeah. Um, well, Ask Addy has got a kind of a gravatar, yeah, gravatar yeah, yeah. image. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. And I am sitting across the small table from the original Addy. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was the original. That was the original Ask Addy. Yeah. It's certain. It's cert- it's since gotten a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> and, we uh, won't reveal who's currently doing it because we don't want them to be outed in public. Uh, I guess that's true. That's true. But we've got like uh, those are monthly uh, advice column postings for online faculty development, which is very, very uh, long tail and 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 niche and all, but it's really kind of cool. And I enjoyed writing the, um, uh, the columns that I did. We solicit uh, ideas from folks and, and if we can get it an actual kind of, dear Addy, yeah. I'm really in, in a dilemma. You How know, do I get of, faculty to engage with that's my right. course? Whatever. That's right. Yeah. Serve alcohol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> almost was, at a spit take yet again. <laughs> I was going to say pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what kind of engagement you want. Yeah. <laughs> But that's great. It's a it's a way for for the the participants in the community to kind of ask a, an advice question, even anonymously, yeah. if they want, um, and and have have a 
thoughtful response. And I think that's my favorite part of it is it it has kind of a high view of online learning and of online faculty development. So it's a rather nuanced view. It's not just, hey, faculty preparation, that's, uh, here's your training materials on your LMS, right? No, it's far beyond that. And and these, these uh, dilemmas and the responses show you how nuanced things are. And uh, but I think they're all helpful. Uh, certainly, the ones after I stopped writing the column are very, very helpful. <laughs> they are they are good now. Um, yes, that's right. Not that they weren't good before, <laughs> but uh, since I'm not saying the name of yes. the instructional designer who's currently writing that, that's right. Um, they're they're still excellent. Yes. All right. Maybe the last item we'll uh-huh. talk about is the uh, the world famous Top Kit Digest. Mm, sounds cool. Yeah. So the Top Kit Digest is. Um, a periodic email that is sent out um, under the TopKit banner mm-hmm. to to registered subscribers um, on uh, uh, information resources practices that might be of use to them. Mm-hmm. And there's usually, uh, I think you came up with this too, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. idea of like one for you and one to share. Yeah, so exactly. here's an idea right. that you can put to, to use in your own practice. And then here's an idea that you can share with others. Yeah. Um, and maybe you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Yeah. And then we kind of rebranded a little bit, you know, from the from the kit and from the community. But yeah, it's very much that idea of like, here's something for you as a as an instructional designer, faculty developer that you would personally find useful. And that is the probably the one quandary I think we face a lot of times is some folks think, oh, this is a resource site for my online faculty. Right. And it's really a resource site for online instructional designers, faculty developers. Yeah. It's very meta in when that sense. When we went to Tallahassee and pitched it, we, we put it in terms like train the trainer site. Yes, that, that kind helped. of a thing. That's right. And so the idea of the digest is like, here's something you can take as, a, as an instructional designer or faculty developer, and then here's something you could maybe share. That's kind of the idea anyway. And so it's just little bite-sized nuggets. And then so there's always something from a uh, feature from the, the community, a uh, feature from the site. Uh, and, um, and it's nice when you can kind of say, oh, here's Tom Kavanaugh from you know, Podunk uh, Community College or Podunk University, whatever. And and we can feature, you know, your face and all that. But then here's like a little teaser for the current Ask Addy column as well. Right. So it's really very digestible, comes in your email monthly. And you know, Tom, we've got like over 650 subscribers worldwide to that that are getting those monthly emails. I think that's great. And um, maybe if everybody's listening, would go to topkit.org. Mm-hmm. Uh, all, it's real easy to just register. And free. Yeah, to subscribe to that uh, to that digest. And that's probably the easiest thing to, to get started with. But and I would definitely encourage folks to... Uh, click around the sample cores. Easiest thing is just subscribe to the digest, like you said, because then you can kind of look at it yourself. But the sample course is worth a look, and that uh, that faculty development decision guide is worth a look as well. Yep. So um, you want to take a shot at, sure. the, at I, the bottom line here? I will try to land the plane. Uh, so I think this is fair. So those of you who are regular listeners to TopCast – are likely responsible in some way for the successful preparation of online faculty. So if that's your role, it's easy to feel that you're on your own and starting from a blank slate when it comes to uh, preparing well your online faculty. So the top kit resources and community of practice let you know that you are not alone and you do not have to start from scratch, which is a nice compliment to our top cast podcast here. I think if you like this, you'll like that. That's right. In fact, if you go to the Center for Distributed Learning's website, they're, they sit side by side in our That's list right. of other resources. <laughs> well, they have top right in the name next Yeah. Well, I mean, there's Topcast, <laughs> Top Kit, there's Topper, Topper, and then there's the Blended Learning Toolkit. Yes. The Teaching Online Pedagogical Repository, Topper, Blend Kit, a curated uh, set of resources for getting started with uh, Blended Learning, part of blendedlearningtoolkit.org. A uh, great resource there. So all stuff that, uh, through the good graces of Dr. Tom Kavanaugh, we're able to give away free to the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, world. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know we got to wrap up here, but uh, I think you were going to make a, a little a little plug to I our TopCast I was going community. to make a plug. You did a little one last time, mm-hmm. and then I'm going to do one this time. So mm-hmm. it's time to feature another one of our Apple podcasts or 
what used to be called uh, iTunes reviews. Mm -hmm. And this one was posted by our colleague Carolyn Andrews from Brigham Young University. We love Carolyn. She's nice. She's great. I had a I had a wonderful visit to BYU a couple of years ago and got the opportunity to do a little talk mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. hang out with the team, including Carolyn and uh, Charles Graham mm -hmm, and a mm -hmm. bunch of other people. Yep. So Carolyn wrote, a quick and fantastic way to stay informed on current issues and trends in online learning. The show notes are a fantastic resource that I referred to for a deeper dive into the subject. Doctors Tom Cavanaugh and Kelvin Thompson are engaging and knowledgeable, great investment of time. Nobody has ever said that before about anything I've ever <laughs> been involved with, a great investment of time. Thank you, Carolyn. That is very nice of you. Yeah, it really is. And so if you too have nice things to say about TopCast, <laughs> do please consider going into your podcast platform of choice and leaving a review or at least some number of stars mm -hmm, rating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it helps others with similar interests to find the show. It helps in their, in their magical algorithm. That's right. Uh, which is which is really really cool and it seems like we get the uh, majority of folks come through Apple Podcasts but hey whatever wherever you're you're finding your stuff is uh, is fine yep all right Tom well I think our coffee's about empty so I guess it's time to say good night so until next time for Topcast I'm Kelvin I am Tom see ya. <laughs>